seem to, oh my gosh, they basically play dead when you hold them. Look at him. Well, you ready to go? Yep. Okay. Beautiful carrier here in the back. Well, it is early in the morning. Sorry for the, uh, I'm just not awake yet. We just got a call from the post office that we got a package in. It's only been about a week, week and a half since we got our mandarin ducks in the mail and they were nearly lost. It took them about two and a half days to get here. We thought we weren't gonna get them on time. We just had somebody ship us a new bird. Let's go get it. Now we can go. Okay, here for the, for the bird. We've got our package. Let's take it home. All right, we're bringing this bird inside. Just to quarantine, it's just a good rule of thumb to do that with a new bird that you're gonna introduce to your flock. And then also to de-stress it after it's been on a long trip. It's taken a couple days, we can get it some food and water and it doesn't have to worry about anything else. There's only one bird in here, so let's see what we've got. The other good thing is that if I actually let it out, it's just in the house, so it's not getting away. familiar to you guys because we had fire our red golden pheasant that we got about a year ago he died tragically in his cage about a month ago we had a net that was there to protect him because he had gotten out once from his cage and he ended up getting caught up in the net and hung himself we've now removed that net and we're just careful when we go in and out of that cage but we had to get a new mail and this person was able to send us this beautiful bird looks very much like the females yeah. but the red on the head and on the back is the indicator that the male qualities are going to come through. And we currently have four females, and we'll take them out to them in maybe the next 12 to 24 hours. Daddy, look, he's got long toes. He's got a beautiful long tail. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get him in here without him freaking out. I'm on the back side of the chicken coop. The other side is the door. I'm gonna call that the front. This is the back side where we're gonna have all the rainwater catchment. And so I've got some PVC pipe right here that I need to hang up. I think this will work really cool. Let me hang it up and then I'll show you what I'm doing here. All right, that is pretty sweet. We've got it secured on the back of the gutters. We've got it secured to the building. So I just uh, miscalculated how much PVC I would need. I thought I was only gonna need six or seven feet and it turned out I needed all 10 feet of that pipe to go across. So I need to go get one more piece to bring the water down to the tank. Now let's take you inside. I've got something to show you in there. All right, so late last night, I put it, started to put in the first roosting bar. Got it all completed. And I opted against doing the bars on the side and just having solid boards that would be immobile because of one of you guys. We actually had a viewer that told me, hey, it'd be pretty cool if you put some roosting bars on hinges, like all three of them on the same hinge maybe, I think was the original idea. But and we can take the roosting bars all the way down. Now, how often are we gonna need to do that? Probably rarely, if ever, but if anything, it allows us to get right up to the windows to open and close them. If we need to do anything over here, it just gets them out of the way so they're not blocking us from this wall over here. 
which is a pretty cool little deal. So we got three different size shelves. These are the middle shelf. The ones over here are 16 inches. They come out the furthest down low and then it tapers in. So this one's 12, goes in four inches. And then our top shelf is this cute little guy, little eight incher right there. All right, we got the second bar done. I need to come through and sand it. There's the first bar. It's 16 inches out. And then our second bar is 12 inches out. So is that four inches gonna be enough space for them to hop from the ground level to here? Two feet, another two feet right here. Another two feet for eight inches in. I don't know, I know some will just fly right up. They'll fly up there. They're all gonna to wanna to be on the top spot. I imagine that all of them except for probably the silkies will make it all the way up to the top bar. So I don't think I have too much to worry about, but it'll be interesting to see how they act on these bars. We're gonna put some of the other projects on hold for a day or two. We've got Christmas tomorrow, and I think you guys sent us a bunch of Christmas cards. You think so, Beck? I know so. <laughs> how do you know? We've got a giveaway here real quick, so hang tight. Uh, we wanna wish you guys a Merry Christmas. So we wanna open a couple of these cards here real quick and show off your guys' families. The Suchecki family from Connecticut. Dave and Paula from Illinois. Michelle from California. Thank you, Henry, for your picture of bamboo from Indiana. Stephanie from Washington. And yes, we will try an ostrich at some point. Right, Becky? Thank you, Tara, for watching. From North Carolina, Tara. Thank you, Donald, Amy, Braden, and Laura from Florida. Thank you, Bill, Esther, and Nicholas from Virginia. Linda from Colorado, thank you for your letter. And our move was not too far from our old place. We're really loving it here. Hi, guys. Lily from Oregon, thank you so much for the card and thank you for supporting Farmhouse Tees, one of our affiliates. Thank you, Julie to Straya. From Australia. So Julie from Australia asked if you could name all the animals on this card. Okay, I think this one's bamboo. Okay, so we got an emu, that's kangaroo. And Pokemon? <laughs> Pokemon, no. no all Pokemon. right, all right, Eli failed. All right, so we got an emu, we've got koala, we've got, is that a platypus, Becky? Yeah, platypus. And then right here is a, is that a hedgehog? Yep. Is that one, is that a kookaburro? I'm not sure, you guys have to tell me. You guys always do. Thank you, John and Stephanie from Arkansas. Ooh, coolest card we've gotten so far. Thank you, Susie, Joe, George, Ali, and Mateo from California. We got some Great American Farm Tour, Homestead Mama for Becky, and pigs for everyone for me. Thank you, Justin and Rebecca. I guess this means I've gotta get pigs, Becky. Thank you <laughs> from the Gettle family. The Gettle family owns Baker Creek. We also got some other mail from Baker Creek, and we're gonna do Hopefully a little giveaway with them. Ooh, didn't know they... seed catalog. They sent us the big whole seed catalog. This thing is amazing. Has a million colorful pictures in there. They do have a free version of the catalog that you guys can go on Baker Creek's website and order. I'll put a link down in the description. But this one, I think it's about 10 bucks or so. And it's just amazing. We love picking our seeds out from this whole catalog. We have so much fun. And we're gonna do a little giveaway in honor of Christmas and the New Year's and upcoming gardens. They've offered to give $25 in credit towards seeds and the whole seed catalog to three of our viewers. All you've gotta do is leave a comment about something you wanna grow this next year, and if we pick you, Becky, I thought this would be a fun idea, if we pick you, we'll grow it too. So you can be specific on the variety of vegetable, and we're gonna grow whatever we pick from the three winners. And I think it's open internationally. Tell us what you wanna grow, and we will pick three winners in our next video. All right, well we have let them sit in our living room for 24 hours. And we're gonna come out here and introduce them to the ladies. All right, well these pheasants go crazy every time we're in here. Oh gosh, hit my face. So we're just gonna let them out here and they'll probably be a little crazy, but He'll get used to him here. We'll get him out of his cage. Oh, I forgot to bring the band, the bad. Shoot, he got out. You know what, I forgot to put his, uh, his ankle band on it here in Missouri. We actually have to have our pheasants registered with the State Conservation Department, and we have a little band that we put on their legs so it'll identify them in case they get out into the wild. Okay, I've got our tags with us. Eli's got them holding them right over there. Number one was fire and we've retired that one. 
so we won't use that one again. Number two is Ember. Three, four, and five are our three females down here along with Ember, and then our male will be number six, and we've got a name for him that we'll tell you here in a minute. And I've also got some little rubber bands here, and so there's four different colors, so I can tell the females apart from a distance, so I can tell who Ember is and who the other ladies are. So when we try to catch them, this could get a little crazy. All right, Eli, give me number four. Okay, I've got her little ankle band on, on here, and then I'll put a little blue rubber band on. So she's got her band on, number four, and she's got her blue rubber band on there. So we'll let this one go. So for now, we'll call them by their colors. So that one's blue. We do have a blue peacock, and then ember will be red, and then green and yellow. So we'll have blue, green, and yellow, along with ember, and then our male. So here's ember, our original female and she's the mother of the three ladies. And she's almost two years old now. We got her at one year old. All right, and then we've got our male, and I'm gonna put his band on. These pheasants are funny, they seem to, oh my gosh. They basically play dead when you hold them. Look at him. It's like the silliest defense mechanism. And he's moving anyway. He's still breathing, he just closes his eyes and gets limp, plays dead. If you were to set him down, he'd just fly away. This one right here is doing just fine. This one's our, uh, the fourth female. She was the first female to hatch for us. And we've got a yellow band on her ankle. So I'll let her go. And then now I just need to band our male. All right, we've got him banded. And what did we say we wanted to call this guy, Eli? Blaze. Blaze. Since the first male we had, we called Fire, and the boys named him that. We thought we'd go with another fire-themed name and call this guy that is obviously dying. We'd call him Blaze. All right, so bonus footage, it's Christmas day and we're letting the young chickens out into a, just a little fenced in area outside their coop. So they can get the taste of freedom for the first time. little fence is not electrified but hopefully it'll keep them in the guineas already want to fly we'll see if they'll stay in there.